Hey, it is Andy with the Fence Post Indie Music and Vinyl Blog, and today I have, once again, The Smashing Pumpkins and their album, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. Not too long ago, I posted a unboxing video of this, Smashing Pumpkins, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. It is the 2022 pressing, unofficial, on red translucent vinyl with smoke. Today I want to tell a story about the Smashing Pumpkins and their impact and influence on my early music years. But I want to start in this past weekend when I was sitting for my latest tattoo, this bird skull. The tattoo shop had it on Smashing Pumpkins radio. It was just so reminiscent of those early to mid even late high school days. I remember talking to Nick, my tattoo artist, and just being like, man, I remember when Melancholy came out. You know, it's like one of my gold mine records. I would love to add it to my collection. I, I was like, I don't care if it's a reissue, a repress, official, unofficial, whatever. I just, I just want to have it in my collection because it was so formative and pivotal in my early music Discovery Days. It, it, it's not really just this album, but you know, there was Siamese Dream. Siamese Dream was like the album that really introduced me to modern music. It was the one that got me excited about discovering new music and really seeking out newer artists. Because all I had ever really listened to at that point was what, what my parents had on. And what they always had on was the oldies station, which, you know, it just was like 60s pop. And then there was also their record collection. You had really only two albums that I gravitated towards, The Beatles and Abbey Road, an original pressing of that. And, and they had an original pressing of uh, Beach Boys' Pet Sounds. Both of those are now in my collection. So Smashing Pumpkins was the band that got me into modern music. And if the album that drove me to that was Siamese Dream, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness was the album that got me into discovering that new music. When they announced the new album, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, it was just like, oh my god, like this is new stuff from a band I really like. It got me really, really excited. And the local alternative radio station did this kind of big launch around the album. They really hyped it up, and it was part of this much larger campaign. It wasn't just my local alt-rock station. It was stations around the country. So the Smashing Pumpkins publicist went around to radio stations and were like, hey, we're gonna do this rollout of this new album, Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness. This is a double album. And remember, this is a time way before streaming on the internet. I mean, we were all still on dial-up. It was the mid-90s. File sharing was not a thing. So most people had heard of the band, they'd heard of the album, if you were into alt rock, but they had no way to access new music. There was no leaks of a track here or there and all that kind of stuff. They might, they might have put out a first single, probably Bullet With Butterfly Wings, because I think that was the really the first one that they put out there. But we hadn't really heard anything else from the near 30 tracks that the album contains. So the publicist like went around to all these stations and said, hey, we want you to live stream our concert. The concert was hosted in Chicago at some place. Chicago, of course, being where the Smashing Pumpkins hailed from. So one of the stations that they chose was my station in Portland, Oregon, 94.7 KNRK or 94.7 NRK. And so I remember pulling out a couple of those like blank cassette tapes and I would pop them in the player to record. And I had one of those like little uh, bedside table cassette player slash radio alarm clock things, you know. I got everything set up and, you know, everything was all set and prepped and ready to go, made sure I had my dinner done, all that kind of stuff, made sure I was like 15 minutes early just in case I could just test things out, you know, a good little Virgo. And I was ready and then it started and during this live stream show, they had like this major power outage in Chicago that night. And 
Uh, I don't know if it was like the city or that area or even just the building where they blew a whole bunch of fuses, but it was this big disruption and it happened early in the show too. It was like the first song, second song, third song, something like that, that, that you know, like right in the middle of a song, boom, the power goes out. And uh, so there was like this massive disruption and I got the entire thing on cassette. And I remember, you know, when that one finished and I flipped it over and kept recording and uh, I remember they're like, they still were able to have communication, but they couldn't perform. So I'm not sure exactly what it was that had gone on. So that power outage didn't last forever and the band came back on and they continued playing. I think they started that song that cut out in the middle. They started that over again and they continued to play. And I think they played quite a few from this release. And I remember hopping on the school bus because that was back in the 90s when most people rode school buses. People didn't get dropped off by their parents, uh, or the majority of people didn't, at least, uh, like they do today. Um, and I was, you know, I had my little Walkman stereo, or my little Walkman cassette player, and my headphones, and I just remember, like, the bus going by a whole bunch of, of cows and, and, you know, farmland and all that kind of stuff, because that's what Vancouver, Washington was back in the mid-90s before it just kind of exploded into suburbia. And uh, I remember just listening to that and just feeling like, wow, this is absolutely awesome. I love this. And that kicked off my desire to discover new music. And, and, and that process really spurned my desire to not just discover music, but share that passion with others. Fast forward 28 years and here we are today. All right, so those cassettes. Sadly, I don't think I have those cassettes anymore. You know, my parents may have them somewhere in some random box, but they have so much shit that there's no way I would ever find them. So, you know, Melancholy has been one of those albums that's been really pivotal in my music cultivation during my formative teen years. I've now given you the story as to why this album is important. It kicked off that passion of discovering new music, sharing new music, and technically buying new music. I went out and I purchased this album, this double CD, as it was at the time, as I had not gotten into vinyl yet. Now let's fast forward. I talked about getting my latest tattoo just last weekend, and we were talking about Smashing Pumpkins, and it got me thinking about, oh my gosh, like I, I should go and add this to my collection. I wanna see what is available and just kinda of see what the prices are. You know, but prior to that, I had seen a number for, you know, 200 to 300 dollars, a lot of money. But then I noticed this 2022 pressing, red, translucent with smoke, right around Black Friday, and it was relatively inexpensive insofar as this album goes. You know, I said 200 to $300 uh, at the low end. This was 90. And one was by a user called NTX Vinyl. And well, wait a second, NTX is often an acronym for North Texas and I am in North Texas. So I did a little digging and I found that NTX Vinyl is actually a little shop in a little kind of antique mall style craft shop, you know, with, with booths and stuff like that. And you can like rent out a booth and, and have your stuff on display and all of that. And NTX Vinyl has one in three different of those locations, all in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. And one I found is about 10 minutes from where I work. I ordered it and I messaged a guy and I said, hey, you know, is there any way I could save on the six bucks shipping and just pick it up in store? You know, like why waste the materials? Why waste the cost of shipping? All that kind of stuff. So he refunded me six bucks and I went during lunch to pick up this from NTX Vinyl and here we are today. There are still copies available on Discogs. This is early December of 2022. This has only been out a week, two weeks, something like that. And I will have a link down in the description. Note that it will not stay available long. So there you have it. Melancholy and the Infinite Sadness, the story as to why it is so pivotal 
and important in my music journey. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you next time.